Well, the first thing that jumps out to you that, uh, you know, they're very physically talented, you know, both guys are, are mid to upper 90s type guys and, you know, when, when they want to, um, they throw strikes, which for, for, for a young pitcher is something that, you know, they're, they're a little bit ahead of their time there. They throw strikes, they're efficient, um, you know, very competitive. Uh, you know, you, you take a guy, a kid like Alejandro Rosario, which it, it's amazing. He's kind of, you know, a gym rat. He's always around, always listening. When, when you're talking, no matter who you're talking to, one of the other pitchers or hitters, he's always not far, far away, kind of listening in and, and just, just taking every little bit that he can out of every conversation that you're having with somebody. Um, and just learning and getting better every day, you know, same thing with Victor. He's, uh, I mean, both guys are, are, are very coachable, great to work with, you know, and um, I think uh, the, 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 the future is very bright for both of those guys. Awesome. Next up, we're going to go to Matt Shodell of Kane Sport. Matt, go ahead. Hey, JD. How you doing, Matt? Um, hey. So I wanted to ask you a little bit. I know you guys haven't told the team yet who the closer will be, but I just want to sort of pick your brain for – how confident you are in the bullpen. You got two freshman starters. I assume you're going to want to rely on that bullpen a little bit, especially early in the year, just to sort of be ready and keep those guys fresh and confident. Um, can you talk about maybe some of the guys in the mix, how, how you feel like that whole group's coming together? Well, Carson Punk has been as dominating of a pitcher as we've had here in a, in a long time, you know, it's a short, short, I guess, stint last year, what he showed in the regular season, but you know, in the fall, he was our pitcher of the year in the fall. And, and this, this spring has been amazing as well. So, very confident in the back end there um, with with him, and they just got in a kind of a low a low three quarter slot left hander is a very different look, something you don't you don't see every day. So, and, and he's not a soft thrower either. So it, it's, he's a tough at bat there for both righties and lefties. Um, you know, and getting to him, we we the biggest difference we have this year is the, is the amount of depth that we have. You know, um, you know, we got guys in the setup role there, and, and you know, JP Gates that had a kind of a bounce back season on the mound last year. It was, it was thrown ball very well when, when the season ended or got stopped. Um, then you got Ben Wanger coming in from, you know, uh, USC last year, which is a preseason All-American as a closer and a, and a hitter. Um, but he's, he's going to be our right-handed setup man to start the year. And then, then you start throwing in some Juco transfers. Um, you know, uh, Anthony Arguez has been spectacular for us all, all fall and spring. Um, and then you got some really good arms and, and Jake Smith, and you got Jordan Doverly and Jake Garland. I mean, these guys just fell short of that, you know, weekend rotation type guys. Um, you know, unfortunately, we just we only have three games a week for the first three weeks of the season. So we're going in, you know, with an extra an extra arm there in the bullpen that nobody wouldn't have. Um, and, and some other freshmen in there uh, and returning guys like McFarland, which was our number four starter last year, is going to be in the bullpen. So we really have some quality arms and a lot of depth in there and, and guys that we can go to at any time, really. Awesome. We got time for a couple more. We're going to go to David Wilson of the Miami Herald. David, go ahead. Hey, JD. Uh, Gino was just talking about uh, Fetterman and said he basically thinks Fetterman feels even a little more comfortable as a starter than, than he has been as a reliever. Just what, what have you seen from him? What, what do you think makes him kind of more comfortable in that role? And how with two freshmen as the rest of the weekend rotation, how important is it to kind of have a veteran guy in there to, pretend, to, to hopefully stabilize them as you know, they go through their usual freshman stuff? Yeah, well, you know, that Friday night guy kind of sets the tone for the whole weekend, you know, and uh, a couple of things you, you need out of him is, is, is consistency and, and to be able to go deep into games. The last thing you want to do is really run through your bullpen on Friday night and, and go into Saturday, Sunday, limping a little bit with, you know, worried about pitch counts and who can come back and who can't, you know, things like that. So, I mean, Frederick as a fresh, he's done just about anything we've asked him to do as a freshman. He did start a handful of games. and was very, very successful at it. Um, through middle relief, he's been our closer. He's been our setup man when, when the team needed it because that's you know we were very strong in the in the top in the top end of the uh, staff last year with you know Sicconi and McMahon and Van Bell and those guys. So you know we needed him to be our closer, and, and he was. You know, so he's in a little bit of everything. But his temperament is the the type of pitcher he is. He's he's more suited as a starter. Um, he, he gets a little, little emotional at times. So kind of with that that starting role, he kind of ease into the game a little bit. And so just being thrown to the fire in the eighth or ninth inning. Um, I just think it's a better fit for him mentally than anything else. And he's a guy that throws, you know, four pitches for strikes and another very efficient type of pitcher that's going to pitch to contact and, and, uh, and go deep into games. All right, JD, our last question for you comes from Luis Zabala of CBS Sports. Luis, go ahead. JD, you, you, what's going on? Uh, you mentioned yeah. only three games the first three weeks. How are you going to get all these guys work? 
how, how challenging is that going to be? Are you going to do more of the MLB style now that we're seeing, you know, let guys go a little shorter, the starters, and, and try to work guys in? I, I don't think that's going to be our, our approach. I mean, look, I, you're going to do your best to try to get everybody innings and get everybody work, you know, but hopefully they don't. That means our starters did a good job and went deep into games and our closers and, and set up guys are doing their jobs and getting outs when we need them. And, um, you know, normally this time of year, we don't, we don't stretch our starters out too much anyway. So there's always more opportunities for guys early. Um, and you tell them that, you know, the, the way we start is not usually the way we finish as far as the rotation is concerned. And there's, there's more opportunities early because the pitch counts are at 80, maybe 85 for those starters. As we get into the season, they've got to start getting stretched out to, you know, 100, 105 pitches. And obviously the innings are limited. Um, and as long as guys are doing their jobs, it's, it's, it's their job. And they're going to be in there as long as they're getting out. You know, I don't, uh, I'm not, we're not going to be the, 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 the Tampa Bay Rays here and, and, you know, go three innings and get in and get out type thing. So, um, you know, we'll do our best. If the, if, if the situation calls for bringing guys in early and, and, and mixing, mixing and matching when we have to, we'll do that. Like it's, it's just nice to go to bed and I know we have the ability to do that, which we, we haven't had that depth in the past uh, few years. And this year we do. So we have a lot of guys to go to.